Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is the overview video for Module 5B. Uh, looking at melanoma, other malignant tumors, surgical complications, and the histology of benign pigmented lesions in nevi. There's a lot in this, I'm afraid. Um, basically, what you want to do is just read through some of the text that I've got there. If you've got time, look up some of the Dernet references that are there. They're well written, they're succinct, and it will give you um, an overview of the topics. You'll know a lot of this uh, already anyway. In the main webinar, we're going to uh, look at these particular topics. We're going to look at dysplastic nevi, blue nevi, the Merkel cell carcinoma, keloid scars, I'm going to go over the two histopathology topics that are in this module as well because I think they're important. And if we've got time, we'll discuss necrobiotic xanthogranuloma. But at this stage, just to give you an overview of the module, read through this text, have a little look at some of the DermNet uh, references. I think the one there on atypical nevi uh, is a good one, as the one on, uh, on melanoma. There's a variety of lesions that are present at birth. Know a little bit about them. The Mongolian spot, um, mainly in oriental babies on the back and buttock areas, and it generally disappears as they age. But the nevus of Ota and the nevus of Ito, they can uh, persist well into uh, adult life and don't really um, disappear and sometimes require a long wavelength YAG laser for removal. Nevis spilus, or speckled lentiginous nevis, read up a little bit about that. We used to say that, uh, you know, you didn't develop melanoma in those, but um, some cases have been reported where the uh, nevil elements in the speckled lentiginous nevis uh, have, in fact, developed melanoma. Remember, usually in a speckled lentiginous nevis, you're going to have a background caffiole spot, and uh, then your nest of nevis cells are superimposed on it. There's a little article here by Harold Kittler on melanomas. Um, it's in Dermatopathology Conceptual. Uh, have, a, have a look at that. It's only a page and a half uh, long, but it's well worth uh, reading. I think, as Harold says, every melanoma is different. We tend to subdivide them, uh, you know, classify them into superficial spreading, nodular, acral antigenous melanoma, lentigo maligna. And we do that because clinically we're able to do that. They seem to be different enough clinically to merit uh, being um, named in this particular way. And I think it is useful. Obviously a nodular melanoma grows at a much faster rate than a superficial spreading melanoma does. And uh, once it gets down to Clark level 4 in amongst lymphatics and blood, it can spread elsewhere. So there are practical reasons why we divide melanoma out in, in these ways. And there's actually some evidence that um, the genetic changes that occur in melanomas differ in these different uh, clinical types that we recognize. Still worth reading Harold's article. Uh, he always writes good stuff, provocative stuff. Um, seborrheic keratosis, have a little read about SEBKs. They vary tremendously in their clinical presentations. They can be flat, they can be raised, uh, they can be jet black, as in a melanoecanthoma. That's, uh, that's a good one to know something about, essentially in a melanoecanthoma. Uh, as well as um, excess melanin in the keratinocytes, you've got an immense number of dendrites. And some of the, 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 the uh, melanocytes are actually higher up in the epidermis in these lesions. So there is a, a degree of individual proliferation of melanocytes that's uh, in them. Um, blue nevus we're going to talk about in the webinar itself simply because we're going to be mentioning it again in the histology section. Read up a little bit about the cellular blue nevus. Um, pigmented SCCs, uh, you know, pigmented invasive SCC is very rare, but pigmented bones disease 
is not so uncommon at all. And this is an example of pigmented bones here. Worth looking at uh, dermatoscopically, generally in the pink area, you'll see the glomerular or coiled vessels, typical of bones disease. And in this area, you'll often see dots as lines in the pigmented area, but not all of them, but that's the classic sort of presentation of uh, pigmented IEC. Know a little bit about bonoid papillotis, you know, an oncogenic virus that gives rise to SCC in situ on the shaft of the penis and genital areas. The lesions may look very seborrheic keratosis like. Now it's only when you shave one and do the histology that you recognize that it is an oncogenic virus induced uh, SCC in situ. Dermatofibromas uh, we recognize them fairly easily clinically. Dermatoscopically, it's much more difficult. Um, but we'll, we'll deal with the, de the dermatoscopy of dermatofibromas later. Um, there's a few malignant tumors of the skin that we're obviously going to come across later on in this course, but I just introduced them here. The dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, the main thing you've got to understand with this is that it's slow growing and you need to take very wide margins on it if you're going to try and cut it out without more surgery. And by very wide, I mean somewhere between 2 and 3 centimeter margins on some of them because they can extend a lot wider than you, you think. The idea is to diagnose them early and get away with narrower margins there. Um, the Merkel cell carcinoma we're going to deal with in the webinar, particularly immunosuppressed patients has a variety of morphologies, but it's a lethal tumor now. And we'll discuss the present uh, views on management and a little bit on the polyoma virus that's associated with it. Cutaneous metastases, always going to keep them in the back of your mind when you're examining an unusual tumor in the skin. Uh, have a little read on that. T and B cell lymphomas will come to in various areas of this uh, course. Again, this is just a, a short uh, comment on them. Pagets and extra mammary pagets. Again, an important tumor to, to recognize. So I have a little look at Dermnet there and also do Dermnet and cutaneous metastases just to get that background information that you need. As I say, Dermnet is very useful for this uh, because it has everything usually in a tabulated form. It has the main things there without uh, a whole lot of uh, extra material that you don't need. A typical fibrous anthoma you're going to come across, it, it behaves like a poorly differentiated SCC, so you handle it in the same way. Um, basically take it out with five, at a minimum of five millimeter margins. Problem is they typically occur on the scalp and uh, or on the head and neck of the elderly and uh, they can be really quite vicious in the scalp, and difficult to get rid of, may need follow-up radiotherapy if you don't cut them out fully. Uh, yeah, Kaposi's, we're not seeing as much of that nowadays that uh, people are on the highly active antiretroviral therapy, but uh, worthwhile just doing a little look in there about the different types of uh, Kaposi's, the ones that are associated with immunosuppressed patients, the ones that are associated with people with an adequate immune, uh, immune system. I think they're all, I think it's herpes type 8 virus that they're all recognized as being derived from that now, both, both types. But of course, if you don't have a decent immune system, they tend to be a, a lot more proliferative uh, in immunosuppressed patients. Little section on surgical complications. It's really hemorrhage and infection. Just learn when infection tends to occur. Learn how to deal with a patient who has hemorrhaged into a wound. Generally, you have to take it down and find the bleeding point, seal it, and then sew them back up again. Sometimes you can get away with leaving it, but usually you're better, in fact, taking it down. The, the main thing is to just avoid the circumstance where someone's going to bleed in the first place. You know, look and see if they're on blood thinners, particularly the ones that affect platelets, you know, copy dogrel and uh, aspirin. Um, usually warfarin isn't as big a, a problem, but uh, the other two can be. And it's worthwhile having patients off these for 7 to 10 days beforehand. With warfarin, so long as you have the PI at uh, 2.5 or less, you generally won't run into too much trouble. But uh, check that out. 
um, especially if you're going to be doing surgery around the eye or other areas where bleeding is going to be a considerable problem. Uh, what else do we have? We're going to talk a little bit about keloid scarring because it's something you want to avoid and it's usually a, a good exam question as well. There are two detailed lectures there by Stewie Salash on surgical complications. I think they're both about 45 minutes each. And he'll go into everything there in a lot of detail if you've got time to look at it. Um, in the surgical diploma course, that part of which this is taken from, we also mention some of Rob Paver's videos. If you don't have Rob's book, you should get it. Uh, there's an excellent series of videos there that are worth looking at. These are the ones that we recommend for this, uh, this section. Uh, a little thing here on excisions in the back, uh, how to to align them. I think it really depends on the lesion rather than anything else. And remember, layered closures for these, or else they'll split. Don't bother with um, these various uh, articles here. They're just references for you to uh, look at in e-medicine should you should you wish to. Then there's the dermatopathology topics in this module. I will go over these in the webinar themselves because uh, it's an important um, area and I'll talk through the variations of histology in solar lentigos, sep case, pigmented uh, solar case, the mucosal melanotic macule and these others uh, as well. The other histopath topic I think is on um, benign melanocytic nevi and we will go into the histopathology of, uh, of that as well just to get your eye in. It's fairly basic histopathology but it's important to get your eye in for, for this when you're looking at histo slides. The tutorial topic was going to be necrobiotic xanthogranuloma now, this is an unusual and a fairly rare uh, condition. A lot of them present with periocular problems. A lot of them have an underlying uh, myeloma or, uh, or abnormal paraprotein. And it's an important condition to pick up. It does have some skin features. We'll try and show some examples of those. I doubt that I'll deal with pemphigus vegetans in the webinar, but uh, have a little read up of it as well. If I find some good clinical cases, I'll give you a reference uh, to them in this section. I'll get that done later today. Okay, that's a quick overview. The things that I think you should concentrate on in this particular uh, module. There's a lot in it. Just read through the basic text that's there just to get a feel for it. If you've got a time, have a quick look at some of the DermNet uh, references. And we'll deal with these particular topics in the webinar on Monday night. Thank you very much.